Welcome to a very warm Swarf and Chips. We're here in the July heat wave at the Colchester Machine Tools uh, Tech Center in Elland, I think. Now, you're looking very cool, calm and collected, Tom, because I think he's going to be the quiz master today, going to be asking me about manual lays. But Colchester, great manual lays, but they don't just make manual lays. We're going to look at all the other products they've got in the Tech Center today. But what are we starting on today, Tom? So we're starting on the student. Exactly, so the now, student lathe. Why would you have a machine tool like this? <laughs> Um, this is mainly put into colleges, am I right? Yeah, absolutely, that's why it's called a student. But I, if, if I'm honest, I would have thought that a manual lathe like this would be kind of a thing in the past, but they're really not, are they? Oh, no, I think every machine shop should have a manual lathe because they're just so easy to do the little parts. You don't have to set the CNC up. You don't have to change your jaws. Quick, little scroll chuck, and you're away. Exactly. No, no tool sets, no work offsets, no programming in Fanuc or Siemens, or you have to worry about any of that. You just bang your part in, clock it up, uh, set your, roughing, your, um, your little roughing tool, and then you can start winding the handles and make your parts straight away. Now, the first thing that I see with this, well, I'm going to ask you, what's the first thing that you see when you... When There's you no DRO. There's no DRO, <laughs> which I guess, obviously, it's an option from Colchester, so you can get one, but I guess, why, why do you think there's, there's no DRO? Is it, I'm, I'm, my guess on this is going to be for students, is to teach them how to use the dials properly exactly. and not so, just to rely on the DRO. So you'll be there reading out all the little increments, which to me sounds like a complete nightmare. I'm not, I'm not good enough to do it. I'm sure you are, Tom, because <laughs> you're, you're definitely no. much a machinist. Um, we're going to move on next, though, to one of the, the, the second range. We're going to skip a range, which is the master. We're going to move on to the triumph now, um, which is completely different. I mean, look at it. It's a completely different uh, set of features. Now, what do you see first? There's the DRO. Exactly. So is, why is the DRO so important? It just gives you a live reading. So if I hit the button here, hopefully we can see it. Yep, so you see two you different axes. See, exactly, and you can see your spindle speed. Yeah, exactly. Have you got any more questions to ask me? Now you're going to be the quiz now, master. There's some more features on this, which I'm guessing you know already. So the little knob at the top. Yeah, that's your variable speed drive for the spindle. So normally on the old student and old, loads of older lathes you'd get back in the day would be a big fat uh, set of gears to set your spindle speed as well as the big set of gears to set your, your feed rate as well. Which I find, if I'm honest, I feel like working on a CNC machine, it kind of abstracts you away from the real intricacies of how the system actually oh, works. Oh, to me, Whereas, that looks daunting. Yeah, it, well, because it, it does. I mean, what, you look at the big tables. Yeah, exactly. You look at the big tables and you've got uh, CR1W will tell you how to do a 0.2 uh, mil per rev, um, mil per rev uh, threaded pitch, which is like, which sounds <laughs> quite complicated, but you just got to basically move these gears, take the clutch off, move these gears, and then um, you get that, that thread pitch, which, again, like you say, is quite daunting, but I think it's quite nice for students to understand how this is how the, the, the machine will electronically actuate these gears rather than you doing uh, the gears your, yourself. So it's nice to start on these and find out exactly how it actually works inside the box. And then we move on to the big daddy here. So that's the student, oh. the mascot, uh, the master, and, tri and triumph. This is the mascot. Now, this Look is a big bad boy, isn't steady. it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a big fat tail stock. They've actually got um, a spindle from one of the bigger ladies here. I think it's the Magnum spindle here, which is absolutely huge. You can see where they slide on the bearings Keith was talking to us about. And I guess the, the, the big belt pulley that drives this spindle must be absolutely huge. But they've got a spindle being driven by a spindle, which is obviously a little bit of spindleception. But I'm absolutely fascinated by the size of these manual lays. And oh, I don't know, you've got to have a big fat crane to fit these, uh, fit apart on here, haven't you? You've got to have a big workshop to fit this in. Yeah, exactly. But this is also the same kind of carriage, I think, as on the Mastiff as well, which is a bit bigger. And what they've done is they've got the DRO, the variable speed drive for the spindle, all attached to the carriage. So when you wind it along, when you're two and a half meters out that way, you're not there staring at the DRO, which could be sat here on the Yeah, because I don't know about here. you, but my eyesight, I'll not be able to see that if I'm at this end of the Well, I'm a little bit younger than you, Tom. <laughs> Maybe I can handle it. Oh, no, it burns. So I find it fascinating that they've completely changed the where the, uh, where the DRO is and where the, the variable speed drive is just to deal with that extra operator ergonomics with what is quite, um, you need quite a lot of skill to be running these machines. Oh, I'd say so, yeah. But my question is, do you think everyone should start on one of these before going onto a CNC machine? Because oh. I know that's a bit of a question. That's probably quite controversial now. I know, Tom, that did you, did you start on a manual machine? No. No, no, no. you didn't. You started on the CNC. I was from the iPad generation. Yeah. I started straight onto a CNC. Which, which well, there's nothing wrong with that. What we're going to move on to next, though, are something, a machine that I, kind of machine that I've never seen before. I've never seen one of these before, and I am quite interested to learn about this machine because I think it is a great step between the manual lathe and 
a full CNC machine. Exactly. So this is what Keith Klo, who we're talking to today, uh, called the combination manual and CNC. So if you look behind the control here, you've got the classic Colchester conventional machine design. This is with an extra tool changer on the carriage rather than a standard tool post. Now this is an option, it can come with a standard tool post, but we've got, look at this, we've got a Fanuc CNC, a full Fanuc Nort I uh, Plus CNC control, which has got manual guide eye, you can program it as normal, uh, set the tool offsets, but it's a weird, because it's got the combination, you've got your winding handles and you can uh, set the spindle going by just pressing that up there and you can uh, set the feed going with a, with a handle here, so it's still got that kind of intuitive, tactile... Well, on this, you can actually run this fully manual or fully CNC, or half and half, Yeah. which somebody who's never run a CNC before, that's a great step. It is, so your operators who are, who are absolutely great on the manuals can come and use this, but your operators who are great on the CNCs can come and use this as well. It's so it's versatile between everybody in your shop. But What's on top of the uh, tool changer? It's a, so this is actually a tool changer and driven tooling. So the driven tooling allows you with, um, this is the XC model, so that allows you to have, a, that has a C axis, so that allows you to mill uh, hex head flats, do some end face work, do some tapped holes on PCDs on the front of your part. So which with is that, you, you can take a machine out of the equation, because instead of turning something and then sticking it onto a milling machine, you can do it all on there. Absolutely, so it means you reduce your setup times, means you're not just stuck with a conventional lathe making round parts, you can do uh, hex head flats, you can do holes all in one setup, which saves bottlenecks, it massively increases your machine capacity, and operators, manual operators and CNC operators can use the machine. And the great thing about that is as well is all your tolerances, because it's only user error. If you've got to transfer something from a lathe to a, a miller, you've then got to re set that job back up but if you do it all in one go you absolutely so, be okay. so, the, so that, taking one of those machines would definitely pay dividends uh, increasing your capacity and also reducing the stack of the tolerances oh, exactly, you say yes. taking us on to what you might set up if you had a manual lathe you'd, you'd rough the part out if you had some extra holes you then have to go and set it up on a manual or a vmc like a cnc vmc like this this is the storm vmc from colchester now what i love about this they, they do lots of different um options so you got down from kind of a 600 bed to I think a 1600 ish bed but this there's a lot that comes at standard on this machine yeah the um, the big plus tool uh, spindle is one of the it, it comes as standard yeah absolutely and what's so important about a face and taper spindle just you've got more rigidity so you can push your tools harder and faster yeah so then essentially you can cut things faster, so your cycle times are shorter. Absolutely, so this can really chew through material. Now the demo they've got on is an eagle's head, it's in stainless steel yeah, as well. Yeah, and they're actually milling this with a tool stuck out quite far. Yeah, you can imagine you get a hell of a lot of vibration on that if, if it wasn't such a rigid machine. Exactly, and with this they've got through spindle coolant or through spindle air. Which is really and important if you're doing what, Tom? Well, through spindle air is a game changer because if you're right down in the bottom of a hole, it's so easy to get the chip evacuation. Yeah, exactly. But also, uh, as well as being really good at cutting, they've kind of thought about the off-brake ergonomics. You've got chip conveyors, you've got a wash gun as standard. But what I find as well, we, we yeah. spotted this, didn't we? I mean, get, get, get a load of this, in. We've got an M-code list, which I've never seen that on a machine so close to the operator. No, normally it's round the back, so yeah, you can never see it. And normally this is, I know, I know it sounds like a really stupid thing, but sometimes I forget the M-codes for kind of the machine builder specific M-codes. as well, if you Google them, sometimes they're not right. So having it on the machine makes life so much easier. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to press do the wrong M code and say like <laughs> rotary table on clamp and then it all spin around. No, and... it's definitely not. No. Okay. So we'll move on. So the VMCs, Colchester, obviously they do manuals, combinations, CNCs. Um, they've also got a Typhoon lay that they do, but we can't see that on the shop floor today. As well, they've got they've got laser etchers, laser oh, etching machines. They, uh, they do everything, don't they? Yeah, so this is almost, it's almost like Colchester, a one-stop shop for all your machinery. Once you've made all your parts on your, your CNC's or your manuals, you can then bring them over to, to your laser etcher and you can, you can etch all your parts for, for full traceability. But, I mean, have you ever done much laser marking? Why do you want to laser mark a part? Well, I've never done much laser marking myself, but seeing laser marking, the speed and the accuracy of it is second to none. You couldn't mark a part half that quickly on a VMC or even with a dot, you're looking at 30, 40, 40 seconds. On this, you're looking at three or four seconds. Which is amazing. I, mean, I guess you've also had to program engraving on a machine. It takes a long time exactly. to write all the, all the letters out. I think sometimes you forget about that. You think, oh yeah, it takes five minutes to run the engraving. But then the five minutes to actually 
program that engraving as well, where this, you're looking at three, four seconds. Plus, it runs just off a laptop with a system which is so easy to use. Exactly, and what I love about this as well is the, spe the little special turnkey solution I've done here is almost like a palletization system for a laser marker, which I've never seen before. So you can uh, load up parts on one side while, you, um, while they're being laser etched on, uh, on the inside of the machine, which is really important if you've got short cycle times because then um, generally the bottlenecks will be you loading the part rather than the actual cycle itself. So it's nice for you to be able to just quickly change over while you're loading more parts up. Yeah, it just keeps the machine running all the time. Because like you said, and after each one, you'd have to lift the door, change the part, close the door. But with this, you, you can load the parts while it's running. So the machine really never stops. And what I like about this is, if you are doing batch runs, you can stick an extraction on it to get rid of all the fumes as well. So it's all about safety as well, which is, it's quite clear across the whole Colchester, Colchester um, brand of products, it's, it's all about safety as well. Well, yeah, and they actually do some special safety measures for machines if you wanted that extra protection. Yeah, exactly. So uh, check out Colchester Machine Tools. Come to the Tech Center if you want to do a demo, or if you want to come and see any of the new technology uh, they do, or just you want to see a, a good old student lathe again, just <laughs> like your old apprenticeship times. Um, I've had a great time, except I'm sweating a little bit. I think it's time it's to go very and have well, a cold yes, drink. Thank you very much.